Vikes now. I am Dustin Baker. This is the April 5th edition. I'm here with Fried Chicken, Josh Fry. Fried Chicken on Twitter, I should say, for any newcomers to the show. How's it going this week, three weeks before the draft? I'm doing good, man. It's been a good couple weeks. I'm excited. You know, this is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> I'm not very active on Twitter for about 10 months of the year, but every single year draft season arrives, I've got, I you can see me posting just all sorts of shit on there. So I know we've interacted on there a couple of times over the past couple of weeks. And like, dang, this is, you, you said something along the lines of, I love how you become so cynical around this time of year. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess yeah. if you, I guess if you're into that sort of stuff, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> when uh, do you start following guys as soon as September? Like when college is playing out? Yeah. So I, this year I did something a little bit different. I started doing some college football previews uh, over the summer over on purple PTSD. And I think that really was a good primer for me, just getting familiar with some of the names that could be available and just, you know, some of the positions that seem to be trending for some certain programs in the NFL draft. So it, it felt like a good primer and I'm probably going to do it again this summer. So yeah, I've been pretty much, it's been 10 months of me just following these guys. <laughs> yep. You're the, you're the purple PTS version of Jordan Reed where uh, I I had him on yeah, my exactly. other show a couple of times. <laughs> and I always ask him with your love for the NFL, how do you, how do you do both? And he pretty much has to be a college fan first and then integrate it with the NFL. Mm-hmm. All right. Here's what I've asked from you, sir. Uh, yesterday I had a show about my five or was it day before on my five draft theories. So from the hip draft theories that, not all of these are going to happen because how could they? So um, mine, I'll run through these really quick and then ask you to present yours. My first one was the Eagles at 10 theory, which means the Vikings indeed want a quarterback of the future. Somehow Anthony Richardson or Will Levis falls. They jump up to 10. They snatch him with a trade with the Eagles. The next one is a gradual 49ersization of the Vikings offense, which would mean they don't need to draft a WR2. They're content with KJ Osborne, who would be Brandon Ayuk, and then they've got George Kittle for TJ Hawkinson or vice versa. And then um, perhaps my third theory, Bijan Robinson to the Vikings. If he's there at 23, he would be the Christian McCaffrey. Um, the the more realistic ones are the guaranteed cornerback theory, CB theory, because the Vikings don't really have any. I mean, they have Byron Murphy and a couple maybes and youngsters, Caleb Evans and Andrew Booth. So it feels like every day we get closer to the draft and no more free agents are signed at cornerback. They have to absolutely get a cornerback with their first pick. And finally, the one that I will continue to endorse until it does not happen is the trade back theory, where they trade once or twice from the 23rd spot to stockpile all of these picks in the rounds two through four, because that's allegedly a sweet spot. But enough about me. Present me with your, uh, not your top theory, but your first theory of the show from the hip Vikings draft stuff. Yes, so this one isn't necessarily Viking specific, but I think it does pertain to the Vikings. I, I just think once this thing gets rolling, something goofy is going to happen in the top 10 because you look at some of the teams that have been there. I mean, Las Vegas Raiders at number seven, man. You look at Henry Ruggs 2020, Alex Leatherwood 2021, <laughs> and the fact that they don't necessarily need to go after a quarterback after signing Jimmy G. I feel like something goofy is going to happen at seven. Maybe they trade up and grab, I don't know, Tyree Wilson, something like that. Or maybe they trade down or just grab somebody out of nowhere like they've done in the past. And then Houston, they're sitting at two and 12. Last year, they took Derek Stingley over Sauce Gardner, who was, at least in my mind, the top corner in the draft. Uh, so they're, they're another team that maybe they've got their eye on some sort of flyer that they want to take a shot on, especially since they've got two of the top 12 picks. And it... It doesn't necessarily impact the Vikings right away, but once we get down to that 23rd overall pick or wherever they're going to end up sitting when this thing arrives, it there, there's going to be somebody that's probably available that we're looking like, dang, how did this guy fall this far? So I think that that's number one. Uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? Are you talking like weird shit happens like uh, the Raiders and Texans and therefore – like Will Levis or Jalen Carter or somebody in the top 10 falls all the way. Is that kind of yes. I mean, somebody like that is going to fall. Like, okay. I don't know if it's necessarily those two guys specifically, but mm-hmm. somebody that we're thinking is going to go in that top 10 is going, is going to fall down the board. Okay. So that first theory would be that the Vikings perhaps pounce on somebody they wouldn't have dreamed would have been available at 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. pretty much where I'm at. Oh, I like um, it. And I think there's then, I think there's hopping in. Oh, 
I think yeah. there's steam for it because recently Will Levis has fallen in a couple mocks to 23, and I'm like, oh, the guy was supposed to go fourth last week, but continue. Yeah, so number two, I I keep on looking at this class and how Quasi Dofamensa approached it, like trading away all these picks. And I don't know, I'm going to ask, I'll ask you this. How many guys are, as somebody that like follows the NFL draft, like on an outside uh, sort of view, how many guys have you been sold that are going to be stars in the NFL from this class? No, like, it's not- I can maybe think of three at yeah. this point. It's nothing compared. I mean, we always have the um, attribute of hindsight because like, of course, Sauce Gardner feels like a no brainer now and he felt like a no brainer then. So it's tricky to say like, well, yeah, I think there's, there's not as many as last year, but I honestly don't think there are as many blue chip like Micah Parsons type from 2021 in this draft. And I think that is the mindset of who cares if you fall into rounds two and three, because there's a lot more parody. Yeah, exactly. And the the three names that come to mind right away for me, Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, B. John Robinson. Mm -hmm. If one of the three guys that you're being sold is going to be a star in this draft as a running back, maybe the draft class isn't all that good. (laughs) That's 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 theory number two. Maybe this draft class just isn't all that good because I don't know. You look back 2021, there are a bunch of guys that are like Trevor Lawrence. He's going to be a star. Micah Parsons, like you mentioned, he's going to be a star. Penny Sewell, Rashawn Slater, they're going to be stars. All J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan, even last year, Garrett Wilson's going to be a star. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau is probably going to be a star. Mm-hmm. I I keep on looking and there's so much uncertainty on what's going to happen, especially even at number one with Carolina that I feel like we haven't had in years past. And with Quasi Dofamensa after last year and years past where the Vikings have gone into draft classes with seven, 10, 12 picks, whatever this year, they've only got five. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It makes me wonder if maybe there's just not as much talent and maybe that's why they're just content with riding through this draft class and being like, yeah, we'll shoot, we'll shoot the moon next year, but we're not going to go after one of these guys this year. Here's what here's what happened. Um, so, you know, when you kind of had this epiphany that there's not as many stars as you would have liked to see or that were available last year. Here's what I think happened. So last year's quarterback class was abysmal. You looked up, you looked down mm-hmm. at it. And you're like, what the hell are any guy, any of these guys going to go in first round? Now, Kenny Pickett did. And he looks like he's going to be pretty good. Um, so when you looked at the billing this year, you saw two somewhat guaranteed commodities in C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. And then we were told ad nauseum that this is a really deep draft for cornerbacks, CBs, and edge rushers. So when you hear those three factoids, you tend to drift towards the, oh, this is a sweet draft. Uh, when when you But when you peel back the curtain a little bit, it, it may not be as dazzling just because last year's lacked quarterback talent. Um, and then when you hear cornerback and edge rusher, edge rusher depth, those are usually positions on your team that you want to get really rich. And so you go about your day or your week and you're like, oh, yeah, this draft class is loaded. It probably has a lot of good dudes, but they're not blue chip as of right now. Is that fair? Yeah, I think there's going to be guys that obviously like probably half of these first round picks are going to be guys that come into the league, start right away and do fine. And then there's going to be guys down the board as well where we're not talking about them right now, but they're going to find a situation where they catch on. It's a perfect fit for them and they flourish there as well. But I, yeah, I'm just not super convinced that there's going to be like, we're going to look at this draft and be like 2021 where <laughs> eight of the top 10 guys are like some of the best players in the league now. Mm-hmm. I, I just, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm going with this. That's just, we might find some nice contributors here and there, but are we going to find the star talent that we've had in years past? I'm not so convinced. Yeah, we got we got spoiled, I think, especially like Kyle Hamilton being the best safety in the league per PFF. Vikings could have had him. Mm. And then Sauce Gardner being the best CB. And now we kind of think, oh, come April, we'll go get, you know, the best available dude and he'll he'll be a top three guy. That ain't how it works. It's kind of like our assumption that. Kirk Cousins is only going to be 35 and therefore is going to continue to play well because Brady and Rodgers have done it. That's not how this works. Those guys are great for a reason. LeBron James is fantastic at age 38 for or 39, whatever he is for a reason. And we just were like, oh, well, yeah, this is the way that they play now. Nope, this is reserved for greatness. What's theory number three, sir? Theory number three, we're going to pin it back to Viking specific. I I wrote about this on Purple PTSD, I think, last week, but it, 
I think it's dangerous to go into this draft with a list of positions where we're thinking they need to go get this position. They need to go get this position because you can probably do that with like six or seven positions on the Vikings roster right now. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is they have five picks and only two of them are in the top 100 being like actual quality selections where you're going to go find a guy that can contribute on an NFL roster. And especially if this draft class isn't as talented, maybe we're going to run into a situation where whoever we get in the third round isn't going to be all that great. Mm -hmm. So we might, I know there was some pushback from that 2022 class where it's like, dang, we're just not seeing any of these guys step on the field. But I think part part of my theory is that we draft, that they drafted some really raw guys in 2022 for a reason Mm -hmm. so that come 2023, they'd be able to come in and step into a starting role because there's just not a real way for them to fill all these needs with draft picks this year. Okay. And does that imply like, so, you know how I've been pounding home that I'm pretty sure it'll be a CB and then a wide receiver with however, whenever they pick, you know, whether they've trade back a couple times, are you saying that that you shouldn't use that as gospel that boom, they could just take a linebacker right away. I think I don't think anything should be off the board right now, especially with that top pick. Um, if they because who knows what they're going to do with it? Like they mm-hmm. could go trade up, forget one of these quarterbacks if somebody starts <laughs> falling or they could trade down and go get corner wide receiver, all these positions with somebody in day th- in day two. But I, I do think if we're looking at this at the end of day three and we're like, dang, they didn't go get the edge rusher like we wanted to because mm-hmm. they need some depth at edge. Like I don't think. I don't think that's the way that we should approach this class just because, again, I'm not super convinced that we're going to find a ton of contributors regardless of the number of picks that we had. What is number four? Number four, I think there's been a lot of talk about the Vikings either moving up or moving down. We're Mm -hmm. not seeing a ton of the Vikings staying put at number 23 and selecting a guy. I think if the Vikings stay at 23, the guy that makes the most sense for me is... Another safety, Brian Branch out of <laughs> Alabama. I, I And I know there's going to be a lot of people like, oh, you can't take safeties in the first round of back-to-back drafts. But uh, I'll share a little dirty secret. I think Brian Branch is a slot corner in safety's clothing right now. Okay. Because uh, he, if you look at his PFF numbers, he played over 500 snaps last year at slot corner for Alabama. He was targeted, I think, 54, 56 times. A only allowed conversions on 14 of them. Okay. So I do think that if you go get this guy, he might, he's going to, you're going to see him come across on the bottom. You're going to see him come across on the ticker safety, Brian branch. You're going to be like, ah, oh, we got another safety. What's that all about? I don't think he's going to play safety. I think if you, I think if you draft him, he's playing slot corner. So really? that's, okay. that's, if they stick at number 23, I think that's who you go get. That's kind of funny because as we did for Mike Zimmer for however eight years about cornerbacks, well, next year at this time, we'll be like, what safety is Quazy going to get? <laughs> you know, because it, if it's two years running yeah, exactly. <laughs> at a non-premium position of safety, it'll feel like that's his thing. However, in a Brian Flores defense, if Branch in, indeed has that versatility, which it sounds like he does, uh, yeah, the, the storefront will say safety. But then after a press conference or two, we'll quickly learn that perhaps he can be used elsewhere. Um, and that would be, is that, so you're, you're saying if they stay at 23, you would more in a predictive sense, you think they would go with branch over Deontay Banks, or you think Deontay Banks will already be gone? I think I'd be, I, I'm, I'm worried that branch is honestly going to go before 23. That, okay. That's, that's how high I am on him. I think, Washington Green Bay could be in play for him as well but I think that if he if either if both of those guys fall I'm taking branch over banks that's that's where I'm at right now all right well that's good to know I'll have to get the the message out there that if you see Ryan branch selected by Vikings it doesn't have to be panic uh because he can you know play more than one thing or they might even have pre pre-laid plans that say all right this this dude's gonna be our third and second third cornerback all right do you have one more or how many more do you got I got one more for you. Uh, I, if the Vikings do end up trading down, I'd still keep my eye on that linebacker spot. I'm going to keep pounding the drum for that yeah. uh, because I think one Trenton Simpson keeps on falling down draft boards probably just because people have seen him now. They've gotten bored with him. They're moving on. Um, that's just kind of how it goes with off ball linebackers. But another guy, I know we've talked about this guy too, but Drew Sanders, 
I, the more I watch him, the more I like him because he can just do so many things. And in a Brian Flores defense, he played he played prototypically like an edge rusher when he was at Alabama. But then last year, he transferred to Arkansas and took on more of that off-ball linebacker spot. But they still used him as a blitzer a ton. He racked up nine and a half sacks, 13 and a half tackles for loss. So if you get him in a Brian Flores defense where he can be a blitzer, especially if you put him with a guy like Brian Osamoa, who's also just <laughs> extremely athletic, extremely physical. I think that those two guys together could wreak havoc. And that if if they trade down, that's something I'd keep an eye on. All right. Uh, let's see. Three weeks to go. And we still have what four more episodes before the event. Gun to your head. Do they trade up, trade down, or stay put? I think they trade down. I think it makes the most sense. You get the you get more draft cap a lot of it. Maybe snag another top one hundred pick. That's that's just what I that's what I think makes the most sense right now. But who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of it because Vikings drafts and it, you know every team's draft always have that element of unpredictability. But this one can really go about ten different ways. Whether it's trading up for a quarterback, staying put for a corner, staying put for a wide receiver, trading down, just doing the thing, drafting Bijan Robinson. Uh, I mean, I don't think it would be absolutely mind boggling if they took the best guard or something available at yeah. 23. It'd be a little weird, but it wouldn't be like, what are we doing? Um, so yeah, I think the only things we know for certain is that it won't be an offensive tackle and it won't be a tight end with the, whoever, whenever they pick first, I don't think it'll be one of those. All right. So next week, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You got a little homework. I want you right. so so the, the most likely positions in my opinion to be drafted with that first pick are in order cornerback wide receiver off ball linebacker and quarterback so if you would um rank your seven from each category and then we'll go down the line with about 30 seconds on each and that way you'll have your draft board and you can be accountable after the fact that says all right so you know your top wide receiver is the dude from Ohio state or your top quarterback is CJ Stroud. And then we can kind of see how the Vikings will do if they select from your list. Is that doable, sir? Absolutely. I've already, <laughs> already working on that. So I can definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, you're like, Oh, we can keep going and make this a 45 minute show if we want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, man, we'll be back in one week. Probably not with a lot more oodles of Vikings news, but just a continual steady march to the draft. Any closing arguments? Let's get to the draft, baby. I'm ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my man. We'll talk to you in a week. Sounds good. See ya.